First, a few nearby large stars can be measured directly. Using interferometry, telescopes combine light from multiple mirrors to resolve a tiny disk and get the star's angular diameter. With distance known from parallax, radius equals angular diameter times distance. This works for giants like Betelgeuse. For most stars, we infer size. The key tool is the Stefan Boltzmann law. Luminosity equals 4 pi times radius squared times sigma times temperature to the fourth power. If we know distance, Gaia, apparent brightness, and temperature from color and spectrum, we solve for radius. This method scales to millions of stars. Eclipsing binaries are the gold standard. When two stars pass in front of each other, the light curve reveals how long eclipses last and how deep they are. Combined with orbital speeds from Doppler shifts, we get masses and radii with a few percent precision. Asteroseismology adds another path. Many stars ring with acoustic oscillations. The spacing and amplitude of those pulsations relate to the star's density and surface gravity. From these and temperature, we estimate radius very precisely, especially with Kepler and TESS data. Spectral modeling also helps. A spectrum gives temperature and surface gravity. If we estimate mass from stellar models or binary dynamics, gravity equals gm divided by r squared lets us solve for radius. Special cases use tailored methods. Pulsating stars like Cepheids change brightness and temperature with time, tracking their expansion speed with spectroscopy, then matching to brightness changes, the bayed wesselink method yields their changing radius. For supergiants, interferometry plus limb darkening models refine the edge and size. Together, these techniques cross-check each other and map star sizes across the sky.